Don't just meditate on the image. So it's, she said it's a launching pad. It means the image is quite helpful, but then you have to go into the clarity of the mind. In fact, um, in, in the, the later meditations, you'll have more images. In fact, she brought in a second one, which was the sun. Yeah. Um, these are all t- very traditional. These are not something we made up. This comes from the Mahamudra tradition to use these images in order to help you to discover and meditate on the nature of the mind. Mm-hmm. What we're doing here is very traditional, I assure you. What is actually, actually the difference between the, the awareness and the clarity? Sometimes okay. Got, um, what is the difference between the awareness and the clarity? So that is actually a topic that I was about to talk about. Um, so we'll, we'll just hold it in case there's another question. If not, then, then I'll begin to talk about that. Okay. So... Um, The the conventional or relative nature of the mind is clear awareness. Sometimes when we're studying the science of mind, they give the definition of mind. And the definition is this. The mind is that which is clear and knowing. Clear and knowing. So knowing is the meaning of awareness. Knowing doesn't just mean some conceptual knowledge such as you would learn in school or university. It can simply be to know the object, to be aware of the object. So in this context, knowing is the same as awareness. And uh, then what is clarity? Clarity has two, two points. One is it's clear of any particles, any atomic particles. It's not at all physical. There's no materiality there. It's completely clear of matter. So that's the first point. Then the other point is that the clear nature of the mind is clear of any content. It doesn't have any images. It's it's beyond images. So, in other words, every moment of the mind has this nature of clear awareness. There's this nature of clarity and cognition, or knowing, or awareness. So, imagine you're going to a shop where they sell things which are all made from the same material. For example, a shop that sells things made of gold. And there's many, many things, all different shapes, made out of gold. Or where they sell things made of crystal. And there's lots of things made of crystal, but all different. Or something, things that are made out of amber, or pot. Or, you know, you can imagine that kind of shop. All of those things the same nature, but they're all different shapes. Now the mind is like that. The mind is a continuum, a series of moments of awareness of different things. That's all it is. But every moment has the same nature of clarity and awareness underneath the particularity of each thought or moment of mind of each experience in the same way that all the objects in that shop are made from the same substance so if you like the substance of mind is clarity and awareness but substance obviously is misleading because it sounds like something physical, but this isn't physical. So what is clarity? And what is awareness?
Marriage it doesn't have a shape. It doesn't have a size. It doesn't have a color. The nearest comparison is it's like space. This is why the sky is a, is a very useful starting point for understanding this. Very useful. But even sky is blue, and clarity is not even blue. No color. A window is a good example. When you look through a window, you don't see the window, unless it's dirty. But if the window is clean, you don't see the glass, but the glass is there, and the glass is completely clear. So that is the clarity. But now what about the awareness? Awareness is functional. Functional. When we did the first meditation, as, as the observer, that is, that is the awareness, that is the knowing, the cognition, observing. Each thing that came, we just observed it neutrally. We just saw, we were just there experiencing whatever came. That is the awareness aspect. So in these two meditations, we've actually done both. In, in the first one, before the break, more emphasis on the awareness, observer. In the second one, after the break, a little bit more emphasis on the clarity, because we were trying to let go of knowing anything. Just let it go, let it go. If nothing came to mind yeah. during the meditation, and there was, I don't know, it felt like full clarity. Yeah. Is, does it mean that I wasn't aware because I w there were no thoughts? No. What? This is actually a very good sign. It's a very positive meditation. <laughs> um, as long as the mind was clear. Yeah. Because it's possible to have no thoughts and be a little bit sleepy. Mm -hmm. Sort of, it, and not clear. Mm -hmm. But if the mind has intense clarity, but no thoughts. Actually, that is that is um, quite an, a good a good meditation. The awareness is there. Yes. No, because oh, Tal did no, good. No, because be I careful, spoke be with a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah. No, no, no. But be careful. When you do well, you must also say, "Oh well, it was a good day, but it's gone now." <laughs> no, I, what I was laughing about is that maybe I'm not aware enough. No, no, That's no. What I was no, no, this is a good meditation. In fact, all of us can have some short time without a thought. I mean, you know, maybe we have a little gap. The gap is actually a precious one. In the gap, you only experience the clarity and awareness. You don't have any content. All right? And uh, there's some practices where they suggest make the gap longer and longer and longer. And then you can stay in the clarity without any thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, question? Um, it's kind of related. I was just thinking that um, like in the same way as that we're aware, what makes us aware of the sky is actually the clouds in the sky. Um, I mean, even when the clouds go, it's because we saw that there were clouds there. I mean, it makes us aware that there is that sky there. I was just thinking that in terms of the clarity, um, the fact that we've, we've been aware that there are thoughts that come and go, does that, is that, in, does that in some way help us, um, help, help us somehow understand the clarity itself? Well, in a way, because what Tal said was that there were no thoughts. So that means she's comparing it to the normal time well, when she has well, thoughts. Well, yeah, precisely. So in that case, what you say is true, yes. Yeah. I didn't really understand the first one. The first one, yes. <laughs> first meditation. Well, when you're an observer, I mean, I thought that saying it's like a video camera was quite helpful, or like a microphone. It's neutral. But it receives everything. 
That's what the observer is. A neutral observer. You don't engage. You don't participate. You just observe. And it's like, like if you're sitting somewhere in a public place and you watch people walk past. You just watch. You don't trouble as we normally judge. <laughs> but in this meditation you, you should try not to judge. You just let it go. Let it go. Like it's watching a, a neutral movie. Yeah. Okay. So the clarity and awareness is the conventional or relative nature of the mind. And what we're practicing here is to try to learn to just be that. Just to concentrate on that. I, I noticed Shan said at the beginning of the last meditation, that's the object of the meditation. It's interesting because it's actually the subject. And it's almost like a subject without object. But in a way it's the object because it's what we're focusing on. So to be that, it's beyond subject and object. Ideally, that's where we're trying to move to, is to move beyond subject and object. So it's the, it is the object, it's also the subject. So it's a special, it's a special meditation, isn't it? Yeah. If you meditate on anything else, it's there, and the mind is here. In this case, we are the object and subject of the meditation. Yeah? And to that, various things appear, like reflections in the mirror, or not, if you already let go of those. But the point is to gradually let go of them. Okay, so we do one more medita brief meditation. Before